So I'm really excited to be having this conversation with uh, Dr. Barber. We've been working together around inequities um, for many years, but most recently around COVID. And both of us are trained social epidemiologists. And I, for one, um, think about inequities in health and healthcare as structural, as things that need to be solved through policies outside and within healthcare. But I'm excited about a conversation around AI and what that could offer. So Dr. Barber, I'm gonna pass it to you to share any insights that you might have on on where and what it could do and what it couldn't do maybe for us. Right, exactly. Thank you so much, Dr. Linos. And so, yeah, so as um, Dr. Linos mentioned, we've been doing work around um, racial inequities in COVID-19. Um, and what has emerged from that, you know, we've been in this work you know, now for a year um, and really thinking about and have seen how interlocking systems of oppression, um, including structural racism, really sh have shaped the outcomes in COVID-19. And so my question for any kind of technology that is beginning to be applied within the healthcare system is, does that technology reflect those embedded systems and structures? And if so, will it exacerbate inequities in instead of improving them? So if I was, you know, said earlier, if the intelligence that it's using is the intelligence of our system and our society as it is structured, then that's not the right information um, or the inputs that need to be um, embedded within this technology. And so how do you account for that? We need to be thinking and, and the caution we need to take um, in terms of incorporating this to as a means to address health equity. However, on the flip side of that, if we're able to account for those inequities, those systems, those structures, um, and perhaps it could be used as a tool. But what do you think, Dr. Litos? So I've always been a skeptic, but that's just because um, I worry that technology is framed too often as a silver bullet, as something that we can um, simply hope to, to improve our, our deep, deep issues and it doesn't take into account history, the ongoing and you know historic oppression. And I think uh, what I'm excited about in this conference is the opportunity to speak across sectors, people who are doing the work in the healthcare field, people who are experts in AI, people like you and me who are the social epidemiologists, political scientists. You know, I don't wanna miss the chance, as you said, for good. Right. For example, we've seen with vaccinations right now, the rollout has been horrible and really inequitable. Could there have been something with, you know, data, big data around where people live to target our resources? I feel like we have missed opportunities also by not using machine learning and not using AI. And, and maybe there is a chance that racism and, you know, implicit bias could be removed by using, you know, artificial intelligence. You know, just the, to go more along with the example of the vaccine rollout here in Philadelphia, you know, um, it was um, the Black Doctors Consortium who decided that zip code data was the best data to be used, you know, in order to target communities for the vaccine. And so, the, like you said, could we have, you know, scaled that up um, in terms of making sure that in especially our major cities, that that data was used, um, scaled up, accessible very easily to um, folks who were making decisions on the ground, you know. And if that's the case, if that's a use of AI or how we could potentially use it, I mean, by all means, I think those are great, great and potential opportunities.